anything else on your side that we haven't talked about that you feel that you know, the students or you know boaters out there as you're going through the boat shows and all the teaching and the courses you're doing is there another topic that uh, you think we might want to elaborate on a little bit mm, i don't know jeff i hadn't really thought about that um, all right well mostly I think I, we need to encourage people to go sailing use their boats yeah um, and uh, oh, people buy boats and they sit at the dock all year round or, or they keep thinking they need the latest bit of gear on the boat they need to get out and use them and uh, uh, amen a hundred percent problems when they arise yeah it's so true you know um we need to find ways to get off get off the dock and enjoy uh the beauty of being out on the water and you're right uh, the the challenges that come with having all that gear shouldn't stop us you just have to have redundancies and think about in your mind i do this all the time i'm like oh what happens if i lose my propane tank let's say i only have one propane tank on board i was like oh well now that i have inverter might as well run an induction stovetop you know went out got some pots that are both gas and induction and so if i ever lose you know my I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'm up north and my propane tank is, I can't fill it up or there's a leak or something happens, the solenoid, uh, you know, fails or the regulator fails, then I'm like, okay, what's the backup? And I think it's about just simply when things break, find another way. Don't stop yourself from boating, just sort of mm -hmm. make it work. Uh, for refrigeration, buy ice, uh, stay, you know, go out for three days and come back and buy ice again. Whatever it is, find a way to be on the water and enjoy, you know, the time that we're out there with friends and family and uh, how um, how energizing it is. And then the bills are a little bit more tolerable if you're out there. Staying at the dock, it's it hurts all the time. Using the boat, it diminishes the pain. And eventually you get to a point where it's, for some of us, it's totally worth it. You know, the pain is extreme, but the joy is also incredible. So the trade-off works out. Yeah, go out and boat. So we, we live aboard our boat for three or four months every summer. <clears throat> and um, we're getting to the age where I'll, I'll be 75 tomorrow. Oh, so, wow. Uh, Happy well, birthday. We're beginning to realize we're running out of time. So I, I went to an exercise a, a couple of years ago trying to think of all those systems which could shut us down if something went wrong in the middle of the cruising season so that we had to pack it in, we couldn't get out three or four months on the boat. And uh, the windlass is one. What prompted this was I fried the windlass again. I have a bad habit of running aground and then uh, overstressing the windlass to get off. So uh, the windlass failed again. So I realized we, we had to then ha set up a system with, with winches and stuff to where we could, because we have a 66-pound rock with all chain road. No way we can pull that up by hand. So I had to figure out a way to do that. And then I, I realized that if the starter motor fails, I'm, we're in trouble because I need that engine to generate electricity to run all the systems. And then I realized if the alternator goes out, uh, we'll be out of power pretty quickly on the boat, electrical power. Uh, so I started making a list of all these bits and pieces, single point failures that mm -hmm. could end our cruising season and force us to go back to the dock and which likely would be hard to replace at short notice so then we'd be stuck for weeks and so i started putting those extra bits of equipment back on the boat so now i have a spare windless motor and i have a spare alternator and i have a spare starter motor and, and just so that um these single point failures that would shut us down I, I have a redundancy built in on the boat i have the parts that i need to do a workaround on the, the uh, raw water pump on the engine if it fails you know, I've got an impeller and stuff, but if the pump itself fails, uh, it would shut us down. That's so smart. So I have a, now I have a spare wall water pump on the engine. And uh, that way, uh, uh, the the critical equipment, uh, I think I can keep the boat functioning at least till the end of the, the season. And then we can take our time to sort out any problems that arose in the preceding few months. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing, actually. It's, it's about preparation, really. I mean, it's a human skill. Uh, we've been doing it. The moments we left the caves and we were going out, we were always trying to prepare for oh, how long we're going to be out. What do we need? How do we come back safely? Are we going to have enough food, whatever, weapons, whatever, everything we are out in the wilderness. And when I go boating, I do the same thing. Like I've, I have a spare water pump for every single one of my pumps. You know, if I lose a water pump for freshwater, let's say saltwater washdown, I have one backup. If I've got a freshwater pump that fails, 
I have a manual one, but I also have a backup just waiting. Bilge pumps, spare bilge pumps on board, have those for every single bilge pumps. Having those little parts, especially for us in the Pacific Northwest, where once you're north, there's fewer and fewer towns to go resupply from. Mm -hmm. In some cases, you know, you're days away from days away from finding just a place where cars can park, where civilization is, you know, connected mm -hmm. again. And so, yeah, it's funny. You can actually kind of think about those things and scratch your head and go, okay, well, what's going to stop me? For me on my boat, it was refrigeration. Having a backup sort of like refrigeration system where if one failed, I'm not saying I'm going to, but I have a little ice box, you know, the moderate little maybe two cubic feet of a refrigeration that I can plug in. So that's a backup in case my main refrigeration dies. And then eventually you feel yourself being free from going away further and further out where you're on your own. And that feeling is chasing that feeling is amazing. Yep. It's just like being an astronaut, but not really, but getting as close as we can to being away from civilization <laughs> without actually having the, 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 the wonders of going out into space. But that's what it is. It's just about being reliable or building reliable, reliable systems so that uh, our crew doesn't get interrupted when things go bad because they do eventually something will break and every season it does. And it's just how you quickly you repair it and get back on your feet to keep boating again. So like a formula one uh, pit stop or something like that, not as fast of course, but you know, we're trying. Yeah. Thanks again for your time, sharing all your insights, Nigel. I want to say, honestly, you've been doing it for like you say, 40 years and to the rest of us that are inspired by your journey and you leading the way and making sure that our boat electrical systems are reliable and like you say, better is awesome. So thank you. Thank you. And again, I encourage everyone who hasn't had a chance to check out the courses uh, that Nigel, I know our team, our technicians uh, are on that journey, uh, taking those courses. And it's been very helpful. I've heard it from multiple people on my team. Uh, of course, some of the geeks in us love that stuff, but I encourage every day. Just be smart about your boat, know your boat more in and out, and uh, you're going to feel more comfortable going further and further away and, they're f you know, enjoying it. So, again, thank you, Nigel, for your time today. I really do appreciate well, it. Well, thank you, Jeff. Awesome. Great to talk All to right. you. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.